What is transparency? Why can light travel through some materials and not others? I'll try to answer these questions. It's perhaps not as easy as it first seems. A transparent substance is one which allows photons to pass through unchanged. This is known as transmission and happens because the photon doesn't interact with any of the electrons in the atoms and it continues its journey until it interacts with another atom that does. Ultraviolet frequency photons are absorbed by glass, so glass is not transparent for them. Exactly the same happens with x-rays, for which our body is nearly transparent, whilst a metal plate absorbs them. This has been found out by experimental evidence. In, for example, glass, the photons pass through the material because they don't have sufficient energy to excite the glass electrons to a higher energy level. Glass is made from silicon dioxide, sand and other substances chemically combined to it. Atoms absorb well-defined discrete frequencies. Usually single atoms absorb only a few frequencies and this depends upon the electronic configuration of its electrons. A graph of the absorption of an element plotted as a function of the frequency of light contains well-defined peaks for frequencies. When absorption occurs and no absorption occurs at all between them. Molecules absorb discrete frequencies but there are many more absorption lines because even a simple molecule has many more energetic levels than any atom. So molecules in theory absorb much more light. Silicon dioxide, sand, does interact with photons. This substance absorbs the photons. This occurs when a photon gives up its energy to an electron located in the material. Armed with this extra energy, the electron is able to move to a higher energy level, while the photon basically just disappears. The electron then loses its gained energy and radiates another photon of a particular frequency and wavelength, giving the sand its particular colour. In its pure state, sand is really quartz, which is transparent, but sand contains other materials often as well as the quartz. These small quartz crystals are also able to reflect and refract and diffract the light in all directions. This can be better explained in terms of what physicists call band theory, which says energy levels exist together in regions known as energy bands. In between these bands are regions known as band gaps, where energy levels for electrons don't exist at all. Some materials have larger band gaps than others. Glass is one of those materials, which means its electrons require more energy before they can jump from one energy band to another, and back again. Photons of visible light, that is light with wavelengths of 400 to 700 nanometers, which corresponds to the colors violet, indigo, blue, green, yellow, orange and red, these photons simply don't have enough energy to cause these electron energy jumps. Consequently, photons of visible light travel through the glass instead of being absorbed or reflected, making the glass transparent. At wavelengths smaller than visible light, photons begin to have enough energy to move glass electrons from one energy band to another. So the ultraviolet light, which has a wavelength ranging from 10 to 400 nanometers, can't pass through the silicon dioxide based glasses and you know, such as stuff in a window frame. And this makes the window as opaque to ultraviolet light as wood is to visible light. A material appears transparent when it does not strongly absorb or diffract light. As far as the absorption of a solid goes, you're stuck with the basic properties of the elements. However, diffraction can be altered by changing the way in which the material is prepared. 
a material that appears homogeneous to the human eye is really made up of minute crystals, regions in which the atoms or molecules follow a regular order. The boundaries between these regions are called grain boundaries. If the distance between the boundaries is smaller than the shortest wavelength of visible light, in other words, if the refractive index of the material is uniform with respect to the light passing through it, then the material will appear transparent. Each boundary tends to diffuse the light that passes through. If the regions are small enough, however, the light waves will essentially jump right over them. Glass, which consists of this silicon dioxide, with a few other impurities joined into it, is not really sort of a solid. It can be more accurately thought as a supercooled liquid. It has no internal grain boundaries and hence looks transparent. Solid silicon dioxide, by contrast, has obvious grain boundaries and so is not transparent. Is it possible to create an artificially uniform material? Yeah, of course it is. Pure crystals. We can see this in things like copper sulphate. It's blue, it's opaque, but if you make one crystal it becomes more transparent because there's less refraction and diffraction at the grain boundaries. Another way to do this is to press a material under force. This is done with a substance like potassium bromide which is used for infrared spectroscopy in laboratories. Yet another way to achieve this uniformity is to create lots of what we call nucleation sites, the locations where crystals begin to form, in the melted material and then allow it to cool. Because many little crystals begin to form all at once, none of them can grow very large before they run into one another. The transparent material, Pyrex, is made in this manner. It has a transparency like glass, but is really a ceramic material. So, to sum up, transparency is just an illusion of electrons not getting excited, and the crystals being fine enough not to diffuse and refract the light.